Hello everyone and welcome to our next video. This week I thought we'd have a look at the sea. We, next week we're going to do the sky. So a bit of a, a theme there and again I'm going to try and use the wet and wet technique for some of the painting we're going to look at. Now this week uh, I'm not going to do any painting at all. I've got a young lady who's going to help us do it and she's much better at painting than I am. So here we go. Here's the young lady who's going to do some painting for us. First of all, she wets the canvas with water. Uh, you'll notice that this is a YouTube video again, and I will, of course, be putting that onto the uh, onto the Facebook page for you so that you can actually follow the whole video all the way through. But she's quite good. And here she's giving you the colours, and the step one is using the sky, first of all, and then the sea at the bottom. When she did this, first of all, I thought it was like the children I used to teach you always used to put the sky at the top of the painting and the sea at the bottom. But actually, she does join them up. And she's using wet on wet. You've got the board slightly tilted so you can see the paint starting to run down a little bit. And when she puts the paint on, she lets the brush go dry. And then as it's dry, uses that to go in. Now a little bit of yellow, I think. I forget what colour that was, but if you look back, you'll see which one it is. Yellow mixed in there. Looks like the flag of some country at the moment, but never mind. And she's keeping your brush strokes going level, straight across, and using, if you look at that brush carefully, it's called a hake. It's quite a wide brush to use. Okay, not much difficulty there. A bit of purpley red rose. This is actually rose madder. If you haven't got rose madder, you can use um, an Alizarian crimson mixed with a bit of cobalt blue. If you haven't got those, use red and blue. Okay. Now, step two is to paint the sea. So she's using quick brush strokes, and the closer you are to the foreground, the wider the gaps between the waves, and the further away you are, the closer the gaps between the waves. And the further away, of course, the more muted the colour is. So the colours are dark at the front or got a lot of blue hue in them. And further away, less much so. So she, she paints that in very quickly. Sweeping brush strokes, using a lot of dry brush stroke there to get things. Now she couldn't, she wet that horizon slightly, she says, before painting it in. Now this is something I would never dream of doing. She must have a very, very steady hand to consider drawing that line in by hand. Now, I would almost certainly have dried the paper out, put some masking tape on it and drawn the line that way with the paintbrush and the ruler upside down so the actual ruler didn't touch it if you have one of those slightly curved rulers. But she feels quite confident about getting it straight. I never would. I would always put masking tape down or something to keep it straight because even then she's got a couple of wobbles there if you ever look at a good painting of the sea oh your eyes always drawn to the horizon and if it's not straight it looks like it's not good so try and keep, try and make sure you get that horizon absolutely straight use masking tape use anything you like but make sure it's dead straight because it is important now she's painting in a bit more of the detail there And that pretty much is it as far as the picture is concerned. She's only got a little bit more to do. Uh, what she does now, she goes on to draw a boat into the scene. Uh, I didn't want to include that in the pic in your picture. Uh, so when we come back to see how she's painting, you'll see she's put a boat in. And then you can spot Sally's influence on her a little later on if you look closely. Again, if I was doing the boat, I would use well two things I would do I would study boats more carefully using photographs to make sure I got that rigging right because I'm not sure it is and secondly I would make sure those lines are perfectly straight in fact I probably wouldn't use a paintbrush at all I'd probably use a very fine ink pen to draw those lines in because it's very important that they are straight and not wobbling about all over the place like the one on the right is that looks a bit odd now here's Sally's influence there you go can you see Sally's influence there couple of birds going in, as always. 
there you have it. There's a simple uh, way to paint a seascape using wet on wet technique. But while we're here, let's have a look at a couple of paintings, a few paintings by famous artists. OK, I put down this is Renoir. Nice, flat, calm sea I've tried to do this week uh, with the reflection of the cliff. This is Etretat. This is Monet painting the, the boat in the front foreground there has got that reflection of black into the into the sea. This is Manet now, Edvard Manet. We've not mentioned him very much before, but I like his sweeping strokes here and the sails on the boats. This is good old Van Gogh again, painting at the sea. And he's getting some green there into the waves, making it look a little bit more interesting. This is Degas, very, very straight landscape, very cool. Really like that. Is that a bird stuck there in the middle? I'm not sure. I have to have a closer look at that. This is Gustav Klimt. Now he usually uses gold leaf and things in his paintings. This is very unusual for him, but I thought I'd put that in. And finally, this is a David Hockney painting that uh, he's done lots of David Hockney paintings about. And of course, he's still going strong. So there we have some famous paintings by artists some uh, and some inspiration for you to have a go at doing a picture yourself of the sea. Now you can choose to either put a coastline in, maybe on the left, on the right, maybe put a couple of boats in. Sally no doubt will put birds into her picture, but that's all right. If you want to put birds in, you can do so. So your mission, you will accept, is to do a seascape painting, okay? And this time I've chosen for you to do a calm sea. We'll try a rough sea later on. Oh, one more famous artist for you to look at. This is a very, very famous artist. Brilliant painting, not to be mistaken. Absolutely fabulous in every detail. Just look at that. That should be in the National Art Gallery, shouldn't it? It's by me. <laughs> 